Before we find, it's Take Your Kid to Work Day. Um, do you have any tips on acting? Find out what happens when I give my 11-year-old his first reporting assignment. Then, we untangle the ramen riddle. I have yet to come into a ramen place and actually order food because this intimidates me. Where do you start? Freaked out by the ramen menu? Not after this story. Plus, actually everything on this table, including the tablecloth, under $30. Are you kidding me? A Valentine's Day celebration that won't break your heart or your budget. Shadow Refine starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. A timeless tale of innocence and self-discovery is getting a fresh spin over at Seattle's Children's Theater. The play The Little Prince is adapted from the iconic 1943 children's book of the same name. And while the story of the stranded flyer, the fox, and the little boy from a faraway asteroid is familiar to millions, this version proudly pushes the creative envelope. And because we believe in nepotism here on Refined, here's my son Svensgard making his Seattle Refined debut. Get ready for the best three minutes of your lives! 43 years and counting, Seattle Children's Theater continues to break a leg. So we're super excited to have this performance and every time the theater fills with kids, it's always like lots of squirms and wiggles and seeing a show with kids in the audience is really a special experience. Check it out, this is so cool. This is where all the magic happens at the Seattle Children's Theater. Approach that I may see you better. This is the main stage of The Little Prince. It's a big production where even the audience feels included. I should love to see a sunset. How did you come up with the costume? And we have a really talented team of uh, people who sew and paint and uh, build and make hats, and they are, they are all upstairs on the top floor. All of the costumes and props are made here. It's non-stop work for the crew and cast, especially Deidre Woods, who plays two roles, the businessman, Anna Rose. You know when I come out, and I come out of this little, this right here is a little trap door. Much better now. Is it fun to play a rose or a flower? It is so fun and so rewarding. So many of the kids and adults come up to me after the show, and they just think that that costume is the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. Being an artist is not- All of these actors work a ton to put on a spectacular performance. Lamar Legend is one of the lead actors playing the aviator. Do you get nervous like when you have to go on stage and talk? Sometimes I do. I get nervous only when there's really like important things to be nervous about, like if we haven't had a lot of time to prepare. But the audience always calms me, always calms me. And once I get out here, I have a great, great time. Oh, and how do you remember your lines? Oh, that's a great question them. too. I don't always remember them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we drill them over and over and over again in my head and I go home and I study it just like anyone who has homework. You go over it and over it and over it and over it until they stick. And then you don't even have to think about it anymore. I wonder. I have a, a whole new respect on the power of what theater can do to children and how important it is. I always knew how important it was, but even more so now that we are able to provide access to communities who may not be able to come see theater, how important and life-changing that can be. After being on stage with this talented cast and crew, I had one last question. Can you give me a line that I can try and say? I'll let you do one of my lines. Let's really test your acting skills, okay? So I'm gonna be the little prince and I'm gonna say, you are beautiful. And you say, what's that, okay? Okay. You're beautiful. What's that? Okay, one more time. Do it really loud and look out at the audience. You're beautiful. What's that? Great job, high five. Wait, I can't forget the curtain call. So we're waiting back here and the curtain's right there and then the curtain comes up and then you take a step down, they're clapping, you look, you smile, and bow. For Seattle Refined, I'm Svensgard Swanson. The Little Prince runs through March 4th at Seattle Children's Theater. If you're a theater lover who missed out on snagging tickets to Hamilton, all is not lost. The Tony Award winning sensation playing at the Paramount is all anyone in Seattle is talking about. It's the hottest ticket in town. Tickets are going for hundreds, even thousands of dollars on the secondary market. But get this, if you're lucky, you can still get a great seat for just 10 bucks. The show is doing an online daily digital lottery 
where 40 seats every day will go to winners on the cheap. To learn more, log on to our website. If you're jealous of all your friends who work for Amazon, prepare to enter the realm of the super jealous. Last week, Amazon gave tours of its spheres in South Lake Union. The spheres are a place for Amazon employees to work, hold meetings, and decompress. And pretty soon, they will also be a place for fine dining. Seattle super chef Renee Erickson has announced plans to open a bar and Italian restaurant inside the spheres. No word on a name yet, but it's expected to open later this summer. I love to discover new places to eat and new styles of food, but sometimes it can be really intimidating when you're not sure what all the words on the menu mean. For instance, ramen restaurants are all the rage these days. But if I had to sit down and actually order, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But all that's about to change. Refine's Carrie Brandenburg has our first edition of Ramen 101. I don't know about you, but when I hear the word ramen, I think of this stuff. But with dozens of ramen restaurants in Seattle, like Arashi in Ballard, I knew there had to be more to this ramen thing than a brick of noodles and a packet of seasoning. The R5. It's a, it's a pork belly ramen, a lot of tenderness, a lot of saltiness. We get it spicy. If you're feeling adventurous, you can get some sweet corn in there. These guys obviously know what they're doing, but I had no clue what to order. That's why I turned to Ricky, the ramen guru at Arashi. You open this menu, there are 10 different kinds of ramen. It's intimidating. I have yet to come into a ramen place and actually order food because this intimidates me. Where do you start? I will start on the basic. Okay. The first one, I want shio. Ramen 101. It all starts with the broth. Shio is a beginner-friendly pork-based broth. It gets its creamy color from 16 hours of prep time. A soft-boiled egg, bean sprouts, and melt-in-your-mouth pork belly are the standard toppings. How is it? It's so good. It's like creamy, but again, 16 hours soup. Yeah, that's why I make it creamy. Pork and water. Yeah. That's amazing. How different with the top ramen? It's much, much better than top ramen. Yes, I've changed my ways, I promise, I promise. Wow. It's so good. Yeah. It was so good, but my skills with the chopsticks were not. Okay, you're supposed to use a spoon to take the broth, to sample the broth. Oh! Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need so many lessons. Needle. Once I felt more confident in the ramen game, it was time to expand my horizons. This black garlic ramen, what's the deal with that? It's really good because we make our own black garlic oil from the house. Is it spicy? No spicy. Not spicy, mild. just yeah. flavorful. Yeah. Yeah. With any ramen bowl, you can choose from three levels of spiciness and two kinds of noodles. Insider tip. Like spicy, go with a thick noodle, more flavor, you have more texture. From there, the possibilities are endless. Just don't make this beginner mistake. I messed up the first time I came in here. I tried to get a couple apps. Uh, they were good, but they weren't the spicy ramen. That's, that's always the movie R5, always. Well, thank you, Ricky, so much for <laughs> schooling me on the education of ramen. Yeah. I feel much better about myself. That's good. Next I feel like I can walk in and actually know what I'm talking good. about. Next time I have a question, let me know. Okay? I will, always I will. Here. I really appreciate yes. it. Thank you. To brush up on your ramen 101 skills, log on to the website. Seattle Refined is just getting started. It's fast food with a little extra sizzle. Well, we got kind of a funny award. <laughs> Top places to eat before you die. <laughs> we serve up some fries that need to go on your bucket list. Plus. Hey, Gary, your projects always have a lot of heart. Oh, Malia, give me one. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Get ready to fall in love with these budget-friendly Valentine's Day do-it-yourself crafts. <laughs> Welcome back to Refine, I'm Gart Swanson. Okay, don't freak out, but Valentine's Day is just a week away. And if you're short on romantic plans and also short on cash, you know what, no worries. Our sponsor, Seattle Goodwill, is ready to come to the rescue. Here's Refine's Malia Karlinski. Looking for the perfect way to celebrate your love this Valentine's Day? Seattle Goodwill has everything you need to make February 14th the best for your budget-loving bay. DIY guy and crafty Cupid Gary Foy shared some ideas sure to delight your darling. He says it's all about setting the stage for romance. And how's this for a thoughtful idea? It all starts with a picture frame. What is this? This is so cool. This is a adult version of a homemade uh, Valentine's card. Okay, so you actually made this. Yeah, super easy. You know, we carry all these frames on our sales floors at all of our Goodwills. Spray paint it hit with some red, did some matting on black, 
cut up some old t-shirts, printed this out on my printer, threw in a little key, of course, because you hold the key to my heart, and then you're done. Boom. Gary, these would really light up someone's Valentine's Day. They would, wouldn't they? <laughs> and they're super inexpensive. They're like little votives, right? Yeah, there are little votives in there. This is a mason jar, 20 cents on the sale floor. 20 cents is a great deal. Super easy to do. You throw down some painter's tape, cut out a little heart. Oh, that's how you made the heart. Yeah. Oh, you're so clever. And then what? And then you just pop it on there, hit it with some white spray paint, grab some Mod Podge, up and down, up and down, yep. throw on some glitter, let it dry, put a little bow on it, put your votive in, and boom, you're done. If dinner's on the menu, Gary has the deets on creating a beautiful tablescape that won't break the bank. Everything on this table, including the tablecloth, under $30. Are you kidding me? What is the deal with this super cool banner that you made? All right, Malia, it's time to get those pictures off your social media account and get them onto something. Print them out, cut them up, add some hearts, maybe some lights. You know, Tim and Tracy are forever, of course. No Valentine this year? No problem. Grab your friends and throw a Valentine's Day soiree. We really focused on Valentine's Day, and it's about making it special, fun, and having a good time with your friends. All this stuff was on the sales floor. You got bowls for $3.99. This guy here is $2.99. And then wow. just, just add a theme to it, like this one's candy. Next table's about is the nail station. You nailed it on this one, Gary. Oh, I did, I did. <laughs> You know, the great part about this is, it, again, you know, is that our stores carry also some oh, nail. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, we carry nail polishes. We also carry I some, yeah, some cool nail I tools. have it all here at Goodwill. Now, it's nice to have a little bit of a healthy touch. To yes, something. yes, of course. So you're doing your fruits and chocolates, and who doesn't love that, right? So, uh, you know, this is a, you know, traditional cake stand, but when you throw some uh, fruit in there, it kind of looks nice. It's so can, pretty. Yeah, it looks really, really good. A, a bunch of different fruit. Whether you're celebrating Galentine's or Valentine's, it's easy to DIY great gift ideas like this conversation candy heart vase. Hey Gary, I'm kind of sweet on this idea that you have here. <laughs> you are, are you? Super easy to do. We're gonna make a little custom vase. All you need is a vase. A vase. You can do circular or square. We got circular ones here, but I'm doing a square one. And then you just grab yourself a mason jar or something that looks like a mason jar. You wanna set it in the center, pow. All right, then you just get pouring. Okay, this <laughs> seems like something anybody could do. Kind of, I usually make a mess, but yeah, anybody can do this. <laughs> Ones that fall, right? Yeah, yeah. I got you some fresh flowers, Oh, Malia. you did? That was nice. Thank yeah, you, right? yeah, I did, but it's kind of for this. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Cut them down and then just get crazy. You're going to tie it up with a bow, are you? Oh, let's put a bow on it. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Let's high five this one. Okay. And here's a fun way to add some sparkle to your honey's holiday. All you got to do is grab a bottle. Okay. Mod Podge, of course, dries clear. Glitter. Okay. Brush. All right. And that's pretty much about it. I don't know. I see some hairspray oh. here. Is that, is that because your hair's getting flat? <laughs> it is getting a little <laughs> flat. No, this seals it. All right, and now we're just gonna Mod Podge it. Great. And then I set it in my bowl or box. And then I wanna grab, I'm gonna go red okay. and white. So I'm gonna mix it up today. I'm gonna add both. So I'm gonna do mine here in sections. And you wanna catch as much as you can because you're gonna reuse it over and over. Well, that's the great thing about glitter is a little goes a long way. So you could do any color you wanted on this. Yeah, you can personalize your evening. You got some Hawks fans out there, do yep. some green and blue. And then Malia, when it dries, yes. you wanna pull out your hairspray. Okay. You wanna do a little of this. <laughs> no, 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 well you can if you'd like. Okay. And then you're just gonna do some gentle coats. Ta-da, what do you think? Nice work, Malia. Thank you. you did a really good job. But you've outdone me. You had to show me up. No, I just did a little you white. Did two colors. I did do, I mixed it up a little bit and you're ready to go and you just pop the top and have a good time. That's awesome. Hey Gary, your projects always have a lot of heart. No, oh, <laughs> Malia, give me one. Happy Valentine's Day to you. So head to Goodwill this Valentine's Day to find all the stuff you need to make your sweetie swoon. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To watch that story again or any of Malia's DIY Goodwill adventures, log on to our website. Are you ready to create your sexiest Valentine's Day ever? SeattleRefine.com is co-hosting a Valentine's Day pre-funk at Lovers in Tukwila this Thursday. There will be free gifts, complimentary drinks, and experts on hand to offer all sorts of tips to help you prep for a fun Valentine's Day. The first 200 guests will get a special goodie bag. For more info, log on to our website. Coming up on Refine, Inside the Spheres, plus award-winning fries done four ways. Welcome back to the show, I'm Gard Swanson. It's a guilty pleasure, but I love French fries. And there's nothing I appreciate more than a perfectly cooked and seasoned fry. Washington Grown's Christy Gorenson introduces us to a renowned burger shop where the burgers are legendary and the fries are award-winning. 
we're at Katsu Burger on Capitol Hill in Seattle. Now there are burgers and fries, and then there are Katsu Burger and fries. This local burger joint has a loyal following for its quirky Japanese take on an American classic. I think it's a really modern way to like use Asian culture into like American burgers. I always say there's something familiar and something different about each of our menu items. I chatted with Christopher Petter about how Katsu Burger is taking burgers and fries to the next level. Everything's done Katsu style. Everything's tempura battered, Japanese breadcrumb, and deep fried. The meat is deep fried and the condiments are stacked high. I don't think it fits my mouth. I don't know either. But it's Katsu Burger's fries that make this restaurant a must-eat spot for Seattleites. Fries are important to the Katsu Burger experience. Yes, our, our fries are, are very unique. I mean, we have four different kinds. There's a sea salt one, a nori one, curry fries, and a salt spice. You won an award for one of your fries. Yeah, so uh, last year we were, we were uh, the top three fries in Seattle. Wow. And then also we got kind of a funny award. <laughs> Top places to eat before you die. <laughs> so we have, right? we have four signature fries. We have our nori fries, which are the most popular. Yeah. And then we have sea salt, which is pretty plain, but mm -hmm. still delicious. Here. And then our Japanese curry fries. Okay. And then, of course, our 12 spice fries. It's got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of heat, kind of okay. sweet and spicy. We let our fries cook until they are golden brown. And once they're ready to go, it's time to add all those special seasonings. Sea salt first, because all of them get sea salt. Oh, okay. You need that little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Okay. Oh, here. Okay. I take a shot at seasoning their popular nori fry. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Christopher takes the lead on the rest of the seasoning. He makes their Japanese curry fry and the 12 spice fry. Now that we have all of our fries, we need something to dip them in. Katsu Burger has seven different dipping sauces that they make in-house, from wasabi mayo to miso honey mustard. I got to test a few delicious dipping combinations. Oh my gosh. What do you think? There's like flavors going mm -hmm. every which way. It just works. Look for more stories like that one from our friends at Washington Grown every week here on Refine. Welcome back to the show. You know, here on Refine, we really try to stay on top of food trends in our region. And I've got two words that describe the latest culinary sensation, grain bowls. Okay, so a grain bowl isn't the sexiest sounding item on the menu. But that doesn't mean they can't be healthy and delicious. Refined foodie extraordinaire Frank Wonko has revealed five of his favorite grain bowl stops around the region, from Belltown to Redmond. If you want to find out where to go, log on to the website. From bowls to balls, or to be more accurate, spheres. Amazon is finally letting the public get a glimpse inside the mysterious spheres on South Lake Union. Como's Matt Markovich was one of the first reporters to get a good look inside. It really is a Jurassic Park experience, you know. <laughs> Leave it to Cisco Morris, Seattle's most excitable gardener, to put the spheres into perspective. Not one weed, not one wilted plant. <laughs> I don't know how they did it. 40,000 plants, 400 species from 50 countries on five continents. It's the biggest tree I could find that was transportable in North America. Ron Galliardo called me the Lorax. Because he speaks for the trees, Amazon's main plant man. We had to build the building, take part of it apart, drop her in, put it back. Alexa, open the spheres. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> the spheres are part of Amazon's $4 billion investment to rebuild parts of South Lake Union. I love the lights. Custom LED lights that create synthetic sunshine just one of the many engineering milestones. Built with three times more steel than the Space Needle, a shape known as a Catalan, inspired by a soccer ball, is what keeps the spheres together. It's all just for Amazon employees to meet by a waterfall, as if in the clouds of a rainforest, heated by waste heat from a nearby data center with plants that do bizarre things. Plants that actually persuade a little animal to poop into a bucket for fertilizer, you know? <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Ooh la la. To get even closer look inside the spheres, check out the gallery on our website. 
All right, that's going to do for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refined.